Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Enchi and today we are starting another visual novel. If you are on this channel for a little longer, there was a time when I did talk about this game uh, in, and did tell you all about how amazing and lovely uh, this visual novel is. There was a lot of work put into this game and still is for free, which truly amazes me. Right now we are going to do it the way we are doing Halloween Otome. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a story, so let's begin. Why hello? My, aren't you a gorgeous sight? Can I be honored enough to know your name? Mmm, a lovely name for a lovely person like you. Wonderful. Eric, do your job. Very well. <clears throat> This game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpai Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it, since you'll be in it. Eric. Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. Somewhere. <laughs> Come on! Is that all you got? Wanna try me, asshole? Crap! Missed! Let's retreat for now! N no kidding! Let's get out of here! That's right! You better run, you stupid punks! Stay out of our territory! Code faith, or code coincidence. That one moment of violence started a chain of events I will never forget. This formula, created in the 70s, is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. It is used to calculate the price of European style options and is widely used by option marketers, though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern viewpoint. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. But it is the season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Personally, I love the sound of it. The way the raindrops fell, like the soft tapping of fingers, it was so soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit the glass of a window was strangely calming. For the reason I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. Though I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. The lectures in class were pretty boring. Mrs. Phillips' why wasn't so horrific, but I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly. I didn't really care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook and did my assignments as I had to. I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I would probably have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after this semester, it would mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school. It was just kind of mundane how the days drifted on and on as if there was no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends and hanging out with them, but that was kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of finality to it. I had already applied to many universities the semester before and I was expecting replies sometimes in the next few months. It seems like the start of something new, something that would change. That is, if things could change. I stare at the finale of rain droplets in the distance. For now, 
I was stuck in this class. Miss Anderson. Mrs. Phillips' response interrupted my train of thought. Just when I was thinking about class, I quickly threw my head to face the teacher. Hopefully, she didn't pick me just because she noticed I was spacing out. Uh, yes, ma'am? Would you care to name the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be... Uh, the Black Scholar's Model Formula. Very good as always, Miss Anderson. Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me by my first name, but rather by my surname. No doubt, since the surname was the trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic Anderson Family Toys, and because the founder was my own grandfather. Susu, one of my best friends, turned around and probably gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. From beside me, I heard Naomi, under one of my best friends, clean her throat in obvious disapproval of Susu's choice of words. <clears throat> she means good job. Miss Capini. Oi! Care to tell me who the creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Scholes? <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Scholes. Very good, Miss Patterson. Show off. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. Suzu rolled her eyes and slouched into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smear. She always fell when Naomi showed her ass. That's the end of today's lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Before I knew it, Susan and Naomi had scooted their desks to align with mine and we turned into the three musketers. Whenever the teacher let the students aside in groups, we always crept together in our little trio. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we are most comfortable around each other than, say, compared to being around other classmates. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out a poster we were working on and rolled open onto the free desk. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines for the project, though we did still have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After work on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Susu straight and up to look at the poster and stroke her chin. A few seconds her face brightened and she spoke up. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Of course we did! You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff that you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. Ugh, at least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named or a title, I was the master at ending decision even when I didn't want to be. Trinity Corporations. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon Company? What do dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. Who said we can't produce spicy bubble gum? <sighs> what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Both of them looked at me expectantly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I didn't really want to choose sides, but if it were up to me, I would say... Booyah! Dragon!
Dragon Company it is. All right, now that we've decided on a name, now what? As we ended our name game, I giggle scramble my thoughts. <laughs> huh? Who was that? Ignore it, it's just Lisa. I look over my shoulder to see her laughing with her so-called friends, mostly comprised of popular people that were practically friends with everyone in the school. And as a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all was Lisa Dwight. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working, but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which was readily apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she was quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was like a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone else wanted to be. Lisa was bright, easygoing, and above all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do after high school and, as a result, she was confident and ambitious, though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had known her ever since I was young, but I had ultimately resulted in the rivalry that continued today. Of course, my friends knew what was between us, and upon seeing me glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up priest to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant priss that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a priss is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. It's about time! Let's bail! Unsurprisingly, Suzu was the first out of the classroom, slinking her back back over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strolled out the door. Lisa isn't even closest to the exit and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Naomi folded her arms close to her chest, giving me a disappointed look. Oh, not you too. She's turning you into a delinquent. <laughs> it's a joke, Naomi. <laughs> well, it's not really funny. Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. <laughs> I do have to admit I was spacing out. And just because I answer one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting, but you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. And never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. <laughs> Despite this, they both were silent with laughter. Normally, Anyone would think that oversights like them wouldn't ever associate with each other, but even though they were so different, their friendship somehow made a lot of sense. Maybe they were just perfect compliments or personally just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we the three had been best friends since preschool. Alright, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubblegum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of it. Aha, <laughs> you do like spicy food after all. We entered the cafeteria, a bustling room full with the aroma of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we order our meal and chatter freely. Cajun fries and a spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're 
You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. You're crazy! Hell yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with... Might as well go spicy today. Once we get our food, we settle down at one of the empty tables putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Susu leaned back in her chair, toileting it back so that she could rest her feet on the table by her food. Alright then, is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already? I know, let's talk about... Say boys and I will never speak to you ever again. Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? Not like any of us are going to get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. Hey! No offense. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. True. That's okay, Suzu. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Why not? It's our senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. Well, it really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but... There were not many interesting guys in the school to go down with. Who knows, time will tell. Naomi looked at me wanting to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafe started up and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. Miss Anderson, please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Funny enough, something did happen. And it was certainly no laughing matter.